heard of what? Somebody leaking, leaking information? Game plans. No. You get that. You get that all the time with people saying, "Yeah, somebody leaked a game plan," or, you know, you're, you're telling information to your buddy you went to college with. Yeah. Who's your roommate who plays for the team? You hear it all the time. But this is, this one is pretty interesting because. One game they won, <laughs> one game they almost won. They did. And Zach Wilson against the Kansas City Chiefs had the best game of his entire career, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. it, it's, so it's 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 a little weird that Miko Hartman is is being pulled into this, but then as always, if there's if there's a little bit of smoke, there's a fire somewhere, just a little bit, because I'll there's too that. many people mm -hmm. saying that he is. Disgruntled, he's mad, and he's giving the game plans to the Philadelphia Eagles, which I don't, I don't know why he would give it to Philadelphia. The Jets wind up beating Philadelphia, so I don't. That doesn't sound right because the Jets no. beat them. And then when you think about Kansas City, Kansas City, you know, that's three points. They beat them by three points. It wasn't like Kansas City steamrolled them. No. And Zach Wilson had his best game of his entire career. I mean, Zach was 30, uh, 28 at 39 for 245, two TDs, and zero picks. Now, maybe there is some truth to him being disgruntled and mad and no at doubt. the start of the season I'm because he got guaranteed money to yeah. come and be a part of the team, and then he got beat out by a rookie free agent. He did. So maybe there's some, some truth to that. Yep. I don't know that he's giving them the get what well, like game plans so people understand man you get a x you probably got 50 given plays in a game plan out of the 50 plays there may be 10 new plays that's designed differently than you had in training camp the other 40 is the same plays Agreed. they got the film for that they, when you line up in a certain formation, they know you're running a tall sweep. They know you're running power O. They know this guy, if he's lined up on the outside edge of the numbers on third down, they're probably running a slant. Like, they know this stuff. So it's not like a game plan is going to change the outcome of a football game. That's just paranoia by coaches. Oh, they're going to see our game plan. They got, they got it on film, man. What are you talking about? You know, there's only a few wrinkles in there that they may get and see if yeah. you decide to run him. Yeah. Now, if he did, in fact, do this, I don't want him in the locker room. <laughs> I'm just serious. I can't trust you. Yeah. I can't trust you. If I'm the Kansas City Chiefs and I'm Big Red, and this is the fact, yeah. I can't try. How can I trust you? going to give him a, As soon as I don't give you the ball, you're going to go give our game plan away. If he, in fact, is doing it. But you got the punter saying it. You got Sauce Gardner not saying names. Sauce Gardner went on on his uh, social media account. At, you know, he deleted the tweet, but he said, we ain't going to talk about how our offensive game plan got leaked versus the Eagles, though. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. But I, I don't know, man. I don't know, how to, I don't know how to break it all the way down. Maybe you do, Skip. I can just say that I don't know how significant a game plan being in the lap of somebody is going to help them beat you. I am with you on that, but we have two issues operating. We have, number one, how significant is having a game plan? Not very, Not because you don't know exactly what play is going to be called when, and I'm going to hark back one more time to my dynastic 90s Cowboys. Trust me, simplest offense in the league by far. It boiled down to hand it to Emmett left or right or toss it to Emmett left or right. And throw it to Michael. Th they didn't even call numbers because <laughs> Emmett wouldn't hit the right holes. It was just left or right, left or right. Or Michael's going to run down and in or down and out. You call it bang eight. You know, it, it's just pretty simple. It's, it's really, there's nothing it's, complicated. It's really simple. It's yeah. not complicated. And it is very hard to stop. Okay, so now we have issue number two. Did he, in fact, leak? Because if he did, to your point, pfft, yeah, if he leaked, uh, I don't want him in my locker room. You don't want him in the locker room. So he's been going back and forth. First, he takes a shot at the Jets' offense. He says it's not up to any standard. And, and then now he's saying, send the signals. I, I, you guys want me back? I'll come back. Well, I don't know if they now want him back. They're sending signals back. We, we don't want you back. All right. So now let me go bigger picture with you. 
we talked about Clark Hunt, who comes across as this fine, nice, upstanding man when he speaks publicly about his Kansas City Chiefs and, and Big Red, as you call Andy Reid, one of the nicest guys in the history of sports. And yet, together with Brett Veach as their GM, they will take lots of chances on players with questionable character, right? Absolutely. Look what they did with Travis Kelsey. You don't think he had huge question marks on his character coming out of Cincinnati? Yeah, but if I, but if I know, if, if, if this goes back to my conversation I had with you yesterday about the combine evaluations. Yes. If I can look at you and I can talk to you and I can understand where you're coming from, yeah. I'm not taking a chance because I know who you are. Or if you get to talk to somebody you really trust who or says you should somebody. trust him. Or you yeah. talk to somebody, but you got to yeah. still talk to the players. You, you well. do, okay. But remember, Tyreek came out of college and they took a risk on him because he had a domestic violence issue. Yeah, but you get, you get the information. You don't get the information okay. that's put out in the public. Right. I'm going to get the information from the people that's involved. Right. And Kadarius Tony had a huge punt return for them in the Super Bowl a year ago, and he came over from the Giants because they said, well, we're not sure. I'm about getting that. the information okay. because there's always you know? two sides to a story. Yep. Okay? That's just the way it is. When you, as I said to you yesterday, Skip, when you are evaluating talent, whether it's free agency, whether it's via trade, whether it's through the draft, I need to talk to you. I need to see where your mind is at. What are you thinking? Everybody makes a mistake or two in their lives somewhere along the way. Mm -hmm. But I would know if I'm talking to you and the right people around you, if you're prone to make those same mistakes on a repeated offense all the time. If you are, then it might not be a situation that I want to put myself and my team in. Okay. So has now McCole Hardman's question, uh, his character been questioned? Sure it has. But the Chiefs were willing to take him. They already had him once, but they took him back because they knew they could deal with him. Well, whatever you have to deal with, Patrick Mahomes is saying, I can deal with him because he can play. But what's the... Okay. He's going back to Kansas City, or he went back to Kansas City. Yes. Kansas City had him before, like you said. They so they already know what he was. They, they didn't know. want to pay him the money. No. They, they decided to acquire him once the money kind of went down on the guarantee side. That is true. Because the New York Jets absorbed some of that cost. So now we can get him back at a cheaper rate. He can help us the second half of the season. Because we know him. Yeah. So what is his character issues for us in Kansas City? Now, if he goes from Kansas City to the Rams... The Rams may look at it and say, well, what they're saying about him, we need to dive deeper into that Agreed. because there may be a character flaw for the Rams, but it's not a character flaw for Kansas City because they already know him. They already know. And what happened on the last play of the Super Bowl? Right? He caught, the, he caught the touchdown. Touchdown. Pass. The little Walk in off. and out, right? So okay. they're okay yep. with that. Yeah. He did fine by them. But you always, again, man, you always got two sides to a story, dog. Yeah. I, he, you know, is people always going to question, because what happens in our world that we work in, people that write these stories and people that say things about people and question their character, they're not interviewing the individuals. They're listening to some coach somewhere that has nothing to do with a player who thinks he knows them, and then they're getting that information and they're using it and writing it. They're not sitting down with a player or a player's real coach or a player's best friend, they're not, they're not doing a deep dive investigative yeah. reporting. Yes, Travis Kelsey was an edgy dude. He was edgy. But all and remember, you got... he got suspended for an entire year yeah, at Cincinnati. But that's okay. And the reason it's okay is because all you got to do is go to Cincinnati and talk to whoever was there, okay? Go to his high school, talk to who was there, sit down, talk to the parents, talk to him most importantly, he got a brother you can talk to, and you find out. Why did he get suspended? Oh, well, he smokes a little weed. Yeah. Okay, well, that ain't a big deal in the world no more. It ain't as big as it used to be. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's it. It wasn't like he was running out there, getting in the bar fights night, night in and night out, and night in and night out, and night in and night out. Yeah. That's where teams get into trouble, is when they don't do the deep dive homework. Although... My team, the Dallas Cowboys, under Tom Landry and also under Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones, had as many questionable characters on their roster as anybody in the league, and, and it resulted in Super Bowls. You okay? cannot hey. have a bunch of choir boys you cannot. 
in professional sports and no. think you're getting ready to win a whole bunch of championships. No. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You have to have some edge to your team. I don't want somebody out there, you know, creating a, 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 an issue. I don't want what went on in New England. I don't want that. But you got to have some of those players that got some... You know, you gotta have you a few Charles Haley's, man. Gotta have Charles. You Hayley. gotta have a few. For that dudes. matter, you gotta have a few Keyshawns. You 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 better. You better. You better. That, it, 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 speaking of that, people say, "Well, you took a receiver <sighs> at number one." Yeah, but it wasn't just because I could catch balls and I could run. There was also a package that fit in what that organization was looking for. Okay, they was looking for somebody to come in that had a little edge to them that had a certain snack crop pop mm -hmm. that would turn things upside down. That's what they was looking for. They wasn't looking for a nice guy. They had a nice guy in, in Rob Moore. They moved on from Rob Moore That's and moved him there. They had that. Very good but point. they wanted somebody that had some, some stuff. And Rob Moore was a good receiver for the New York Jets. Wow. He was a damn good receiver, but they wanted something different. Okay. And when you are evaluating players and you are making a decision, you have to factor in everything. And I don't know if I've ever told you this story before, but when they were making the decision on me or the late Lawrence Phillips, there was two guys that they was high on because they had just signed Jumbo Elliott at the left tackle position, so they didn't need Jonathan Ogden. So they said to themselves, we got defensive pass rushers, so we don't need Simeon Wrights, Kevin Hardy. We need an offensive playmaker. It was either Keyshawn or Lawrence Phillips. One of the two. They looked at Lawrence Phillips. They looked at me. Both got red flags. One person's red flag is a little higher than the other. A little higher. And they said, that ain't the... Because those red flags over here, a little more dangerous than these red flags. We can handle these red flags. So let's go with a safer bet of a red flag versus the one okay. that eventually isn't what we want. And as you said yesterday to me, that even beyond your tape, that your sit-down, look-them-in-the-eye interview Absolutely. pushed it over the top. Absolutely. Yeah. But they were okay with that. Yeah. And when you are evaluating players, you got to be convinced in conviction that they're not going to screw it up. And that's what you look at when you look at a Miko Hartman in his situation or a Tyreek Hill in his situation. Is he going to be a repeat offender while he's on our team? Can we handle him? Can we talk to him? Okay. Can we deal with him? And clearly, Andy Reid felt he could with a Tyreek Hill. Felt that he can with a Miko Hartman on the second try who yeah. wins the Super Bowl for him. All right. And let me button this up by referring to our teammate, Michael Irvin, the playmaker you know very well. Did he have his issues off the field? You better believe he did. Was he the leader in the rocket fuel of the dynastic Dallas Cowboys? You better believe he was. He was the one who drove that team. If he wasn't okay? on that team, hey, Cowboys may not win the Super Bowls. Totally agree. May Obviously, it starts with Troy Aikman in the quarterback position, but without that guy, I, I don't think they win. I, I don't either, but yeah. that's me. Yeah, all right. And I'm biased, so. Well, both of us are. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.